Hi, my name is Yvette Campbell and I'm the Collections and Content Librarian at Maynooth University Library. For this episode of our Library Treasure series, I will be showcasing several of the rare books from St. Canice's Cathedral Library Collection, illustrating the wide scope and history of the collection, and highlighting interesting elements such as the incredible book bindings, provenance notes, medieval fragments and manuscript waste. This important antiquarian book collection was transferred to Maynooth University Library following a long-term loan agreement with the representative body of the Church of Ireland in 2014. The collection features over 3,000 titles printed before the year 1850. Over 2,000 works are printed in the 17th century, over 600 printed between 1700 and 1850. Approximately 34% of the collection is printed in English and over 30% in Latin, with a further 9% printed in French. One item, printed in London in 1711 by Eleanor Everingham, is the only work in the Irish language. Many of the works are theological in nature, but titles on history, classical antiquity, law, literature, travel, philosophy and science also feature, as well as works by Huguenot authors. The earliest printed works are four items of incunabula dating from 1483 to 1498, and there are also over 300 titles printed before the year 1600. Important milestones in terms of print history are reflected in the collection, other important works include items from the esteemed presses of Venetian printer Aldus Minutius, William Caxton, Robert Essien, Elsevier and Planton, as well as several 16th century Parisian bindings. The collection was amassed by two keen book collectors from the late 17th century to the mid 18th century. Thomas Otway, Bishop of Ossory, founded the Cathedral Library in 1693 for the education of the clergy. In 1754, his collection was greatly expanded through a bequest from another Bishop of Ossory, Edward Morris. Both the bequests formed the Otway Morris collection of over 3,000 volumes, ensuring its management and their long-term legacies. A substantial amount of work began on the collection in September 2015, which included freezer de-infestation, a basic clean and transportation from St. Canice's Cathedral in Kilkenny to Maynooth University, where I had the pleasure of cataloguing the material. Items requiring conservation have been identified and repaired by our on-site conservation team. The collection is housed in a secure, environmentally controlled storage area with optimal temperature and humidity levels to prevent insect damage and deterioration. Here are a few highlights from the collection. The fourth edition of Shakespeare's Comedies, Histories and Tragedies, more commonly known as the Fourth Folio, printed in 1685, bears the signature of Edward Morris. The text features the famous dome-headed engraved portrait of Shakespeare by Martin Drusout. The text of the Fourth Folio contains several errors and includes seven handwritten titles listed under a catalogue of all the comedies, histories and tragedies contained in this book, which include The London Prodigal, The Puritan Widow, and a Yorkshire tragedy and Pericles. Our 1483 Venetian copy of Decades of History from the Deterioration of the Roman Empire by Flavio Biondo, while missing its title page, has an exquisite opening page featuring a decorated foliage border and initials in blue, red and gold. It is an incunable, or incunabulum, an example of a book printed before 1500 in the early period of typography. Another important item in our collection of incunabula is a very rare copy of Boethius's Consolation of Philosophy, printed in Nuremberg in 1497. It has been described as the single most important and influential work in the West on medieval and early Renaissance Christianity, as well as the last great Western work of the classical period. This copy features annotations from three centuries on the title page alone. A favourite of mine is Alexander Barclay's English edition of Sebastian Brandt's A Ship of Fools, featuring 112 satires illustrated with woodcuts from 1590. One of the reasons for the work's great success was undoubtedly the high quality woodcuts that introduce and complement the text. Each sin or vice in the book is accompanied by a finely detailed woodcut that gives either a literal or allegorical interpretation of that particular sin or vice. Among the artists with whom Brandt collaborated on this work was the young Albrecht Dürer. A very important addition to this collection is a fragmented leaf of John Gower's Confessio Amantis, printed by William Caxton, 
which is a very early example of one of the most important works of Middle English poetry written in the vernacular, and one which helped to create the first canon of English literature. John Gower was a good friend of Geoffrey Chaucer and was an influence for both Chaucer and even Shakespeare. The Confessio Amantis, or The Lover's Confession, is a poem about an ageing lover who makes a confession to the chaplain of Venus, written in the style of the Canterbury Tales. Our fragment is folio 94, containing lines 575 to 742 of Book 5. It is a first edition printed at Westminster by Caxton in 1483. Another William Caxton connection relates to our Sarum Missal, printed in 1498 by Julian Notary and Jean Barbier for Fleet Street Printer and associate of Caxton, Winkin de Word. What makes the St. Canis's collection truly spectacular is the number of manuscript fragments found in the collection, constituting some of the oldest pieces found. Here are a few examples. The oldest known item in the collection is a 15th century document which has been transcribed and identified as a citation mandate from Thomas Bourgier, papal legate and Archbishop of Canterbury, to John Barr in the year 1468. Richard Pinson's edition of Deves and Pauper, a dialogue on the Ten Commandments, printed in 1493, although heavily repaired with fragments of the text throughout, is the earliest complete work in the English language. There are also several parchment manuscript waste present, used by the binder to strengthen the spines of some of these early printed works, ensuring their longevity. This was a common practice in medieval and early modern bookbinding, and some of the most interesting and rare texts have survived in this way. Our video would not be complete without a brief look at some of the former owner inscriptions present for this collection. Over 60 titles were formerly in the possession of Edward's brother, Theodore Morris, who was Archbishop of Tume in the early 18th century. His bookplate can be found on many of the titles, including William Faulkner's Christian Loyalty. An even larger number of titles are associated with the Drelincourt family. Peter Drelincourt, Dean of Armagh, was the brother-in-law of Edward Morris and the son of French theologian Charles Drelincourt. His brother, also named Charles, was appointed as King Louis XIV's physician. An inscription by him reads, For my brother, the Dean of Armagh, from your affectionate brother, Charles Drelincourt, Dean of the University of Leiden, 1692. We also have the bookplate of former Lord Bishop of Ossory, John Hartstong. Seven titles in the Otway Morris collection were in his possession, including texts from the 16th to the 17th centuries. Two works in the collection are associated with Sir Thomas Feasy, Baronet of Abbey Leakes and Bishop of Ossory. A note on the flyleaf of Annotation on the Holy Bible, possibly in the hand of Morris, reads, given to me by Sir John Denny Vesey Barr, 1730. There is also evidence of female ownership within the collection, with many book plates and inscriptions. One example is an inscription linked to an acquaintance of Queen Christina of Sweden, found on the flyleaf of CK 2669. It includes a transcribed letter sent from Queen Christina to Madame Sarrow. The French inscription reads, Madame Sarrow gave me this book. Many of the inscriptions give us an insight into the type of historical users of this material, deepening our understanding of early modern book collecting, genealogy and book history. Music